assalamu alaikum uh, depending upon the electrical connections of uh, field circuit and uh, armature circuits dc motors can be classified into uh, separately excited dc motors shunt dc motors series and compounded dc motors uh, in today's lecture we shall talk about uh, the separately excited dc motors and shunt dc motors uh, we shall also talk about the terminal characteristics of these motors so as you know that in case of a separately excited dc motors there are two different voltage sources one voltage source to excite the field circuit and the second voltage circuit uh, the second voltage source to excite the armature circuit uh, the equivalent electrical circuit of a separately excited dc motors is given by this diagram uh, here we have uh, two voltage sources vf and va one voltage source to excite the field windings and another voltage source to excite the armature windings here this uh, lf is to indicate the field winding rf is the resistance of these windings and sometimes uh, they exert an ex external variable resistor to get a control on the speed of the motor as we shall talk about later uh, in uh, these uh, separately excited DC motors, we can see that field current is uh, equal to the field voltage uh, divided by the resistance in that path, that is the R, uh, adjustable resistor plus the resistance of the field winding. And uh, this uh, voltage, uh, armature voltage, which is also called the terminal voltage, uh, terminal voltage. Uh, in case of uh, these motors that is equal to uh, the uh, back EMF uh, plus this voltage. Uh, in case of uh, shunt DC motors, uh, field windings are connected in parallel with the armature circuit and the equivalent electrical circuit of shunt DC motors is given by this diagram. Uh, here we have a single voltage source which excites both the field windings and the armature circuit and in this case the uh, field uh, current IF that is given by uh, terminal voltage divided by uh, RF plus R adjust and the terminal voltage is equal to uh, EA plus IARA. So we can see that if uh, this uh, uh, terminal voltage is kept constant, then there is no difference between uh, the working of separately excited DC motors and uh, shunt DC motors. Therefore, uh, our onwards discussion will be equally applicable to both the separately excited DC motors and shunt DC motors. Next, we talk about the terminal characteristics of uh, shunt uh, and separately excited uh, DC motors. Terminal characteristics is uh, the plot of terminal quantities and in case of motors uh, these terminal uh, quantities are the shaft torque and uh, the speed of the rotor. That is uh, the terminal characteristics is plot of the torque and the speed. Of the motor and uh, this plot is for the uh, case of steady state situations at steady state uh, this load torque and induced torque these become equal and on this axis uh, we have uh, the induced torque which at steady state becomes equal to load torque on the vertical axis we have the speed of the rotation of the rotor so first we shall talk about these characteristics in an intuitive way and then we shall uh, discuss uh, these characteristics in a mathematical way. What we see is that when uh, we increase the torque, load torque that is uh, connected to the motor, what will happen to the speed of the motor? So at a steady state, induced torque and load torque are equal. When load torque is increased, it exceeds the induced torque. Load torque will exceed the induced torque uh, during the transient 
and that will result into a decrease in the speed of the motor and decrease in the speed will in turn result into decrease in the uh, generated voltage generated voltage is given by k phi omega as omega decreases ea will decrease and due to decrease in ea what will happen to the armature current armature current is given by the terminal voltage minus uh, the back emf divided by armature resistance so as ea decreases ia will increase this difference will increase therefore ia will increase and increase in ia will in turn result into increase in the induced start induced start is given by k phi ia so as ia increases start induced will also increase so after this uh, transient uh, uh, start induced induced start will increase to become uh, equal to the load torque at steady state so after the transient this steady state will be achieved induced torque will become equal to the load torque again uh, but now the motor will be running at lower speed that is intuitively what we see is that as we increase the load torque uh, after these transients speed decreases and again load torque becomes the induced torque becomes equal to the load torque so these are the torque speed characteristics for a shunt dc motors here is uh, one more effect which has been uh, ignored in sketching the torque speed characteristics over here that is the armature reaction so what is armature reaction we know that when load is connected to uh, the uh, motor uh, then uh, current starts flowing in the rotor winding and therefore a magnetic field is created due to rotor winding that magnetic field uh, distorts the original magnetic field created by vein holes and that effect is called armature reaction and we have already learned the solutions to uh, avoid this armature reaction uh, that is uh, the compensating windings can be utilized to uh, cancel out the effect of armature reaction However, if there are no compensating windings in uh, our DC motor, there will be an armature reaction and a consequence of armature reaction we know is uh, the flux weakening. That is, due to armature reaction, uh, total flux in the machine will be reduced. And uh, the effect of this reduction in the flux is uh, an increase in the speed. If flux in the machine is reduced, speed of the motor will be increased therefore the torque speed characteristics uh, in the presence of armature reaction that is given by this graph if flux in a machine is reduced its speed will increase and uh, this is the torque speed characteristics uh, when there are no compensating windings in the motor and there is uh, armature reaction and uh, these are the torque speed characteristics when we have uh, compensating windings in the motor and there is no armature reaction. So we have talked about uh, the torque speed characteristics in an intuitive way. Let's uh, derive a mathematical expression to describe the torque speed characteristics of shunt DC motors. So we would like to obtain a mathematical expression between induced start and the speed of the rotation of the rotor. Uh, we start with the, this equation, uh, the terminal voltage uh, for shunt DC motor that is equal to Ea plus Ia into Ra. By simply applying the Kirchhoff's voltage law, this voltage is equal to this voltage plus this voltage. We are Ea uh, we know that that is given by k phi into omega. Omega is the speed of the rotation of the rotor and uh, this uh, flux uh, phi is the total flux plus uh, i a r a. Uh, we also remember that the induced torque in the motor that is equal to k phi into IA. 
Since here we uh, somehow want to get a relation between omega and torque induced, so we shall substitute uh, IA over here. We see that IA is simply equal to uh, torque induced divided by K phi. And hence uh, this equation becomes VT is equal to, uh, if we rearrange the equation, bring it to the left hand side and VT to the right hand side, uh, we get uh, this relation K phi omega that is equal to, uh, we simply bring this term to the left hand side. Divide the whole expression by this K phi uh, to get uh, this relation Vt over K phi and here it will be square of this thing. So this equation describes a relation between the speed of the rotation of the rotor and the induced torque. Uh, so what is uh, this equation? This equation is uh, quite similar to equation of a straight line that is mx plus c. Why is mx plus c? Where m is the slope of the line and c is the intercept of the line on vertical axis. So if we just compare it with this one, uh, we shall get a straight line, the vertical intercept that will be simply equal to vt over k phi and the slope of this line uh, there is a negative num negative sign over here so slope will be negative and uh, that is the uh, again uh, start speed characteristics are described by a straight line with a negative slope uh, let's uh, elaborate these uh, points with the help of a numerical example uh, we have uh, a shunt dc motor uh, with a rated power of 50 horsepower and a rated voltage of 250 volts. Uh, there uh, are compensating windings in the DC motor and that means there will be no armature reaction in the motor. And uh, the resistance uh, of armature winding that is equal to resistance of field winding that is 50 ohms. And if no load is connected to the motor it will be running at 1200 rpm. There are 1200 turns uh, of uh, coil on each uh, pole uh, of uh, the magnets, electromagnets. So for this motor we want to determine its speed when it, uh, the current drawn by the motor is 100 amperes. Uh, what we can see is that if uh, there is no load connected to the motor uh, then this much uh, uh, is the speed, 1200 rpm is the speed of the motor. So how we can determine the speed corresponding to this current? Uh, we know that Ea uh, that is equal to k dash phi into n. Uh, that is corresponding to this situation. There will be some uh, armature voltage Ea, let's call it Ea naught, and that is equal to n naught. And corresponding to this situation there will be some armature voltage, let's call it Ea1 and then uh, this is equal to k dash phi n1. So if we divide uh, uh, this equation by this one, we get uh, uh, k dash phi dash n1 over k dash phi n0 that is equal to Ea 1 over Ea naught. Uh, hence uh, N1 is equal to, so N naught is the speed corresponding to no load situation and Ea naught is the corresponding armature voltage. So if we can somehow determine Ea1 and Ea naught then by using this equation we will be able to determine N1 that is the speed corresponding to this uh, terminal current. So what we see is that uh, if a uh, no load is connected uh, to the motor, armature current will be equal to zero at no load. And we know that uh, the terminal voltage and Ea are related by this equation. Uh, since at no load, uh, e Ia is zero, so Ea naught is simply equal to the terminal voltage which is 250 volts. So 
for no nodes, uh, armature voltage is 250 volts. Now let's talk about this situation. Uh, RT uh, is equal to 100 ampere. And for shunt DC motor, we know that uh, uh, IT, the terminal current, that is equal to the armature current plus field current. How much is the field current? Field current is equal to uh, the terminal voltage divided by RF, which is 250 volts divided by 50 ohms, and that is 5 amperes. It means that the armature current uh, will be equal to 95 amperes. When we have terminal current of 100 amperes, then armature current will be 95 amperes. And corresponding to this much current, we can determine uh, EA1 by using this equation. So let's do it over here. So VT is equal to EA1 plus uh, 95 amperes multiplied by resistance of armature 0 0.06 uh, here VT is 250 volts so from here we get EA1 to be equal to now using this equation this EA1 is known EA0 is known and not is 1200 so N1 will come out to be equal to 1173 RPM. Uh, second part of this question asks you to uh, determine uh, the speed of the motor corresponding to another uh, current and uh, third part for another current and then finally you can get a graph between the torque speed characteristics.